Welcome to Formation. I'm Donnie Morris here from uh, Wesley Chapel, Florida, joined by... I'm Cedric Horry and I'm from Richmond, Indiana. So Cedric, like, you know, you came to Hargrave, obviously, you're here now. Like, what made you kind of choose Hargrave rather than some of your other options? Um, choosing Hargrave was a very hard decision. Um, after hearing about it being a military school, um, I had long hair, haven't known how to cut that. But when I came on my visit, I was just trying to find every reason not to come here. And there was just not one. Everything was great. Uh, I just felt like a home. And it was like a non-negotiable after I left. How about you, Donnie? Yeah, you know, for me, I think a lot of it was just opportunity. I think uh, back home where I was, I had gotten some looks, but just not as much as I wanted to. And I wanted to develop more as a player and also as an individual. And I thought that kind of like, you know, I was pretty privileged in growing up. So I think coming here, gave me a little bit more structure, would help me build more as a player and also just as a human being. So I came on my visit here and um, I wasn't like too ecstatic about coming to a military school. My mom and dad were really just harping on the fact that this would be good for me in the long run, along with the good basketball staff they had here. I mean, Coach Feshu, Luke and Mev have all done a great job. I mean, some of my favorite coaches I've played with, they're so passionate about the players and who you are as an individual, not just on the court, but off the court, they look out for you too. So um, just coming here has really just shown me that like, sometimes you might have to deviate from the path to get back on the right path. So I think oh, it's been great here at Hargrave. It's funny you say your parents harping on uh, coming here, cause my parents do the same exact thing. Like they just kept saying, you should go to Hargrave. You like, not even just thinking about just basketball. Yeah. But off the court, it's going to make you a better person, a better yeah. man. Like you'll learn things that we can't teach you. Yeah. So, and being here, I've learned a lot of things like how to, how to I learned how to tie a tie here. I mean, just little things like that. Yeah. It's just, it's just showing, just being more mature and just talking to my mom and talking to my little brother. It's just, I show more maturity, which I've learned here at Hargrave. Yeah, no, for sure. I think uh, like back, back home, I kind of problem being late. Like I think, I think I get it from my dad to be honest. But like being late is kind of a problem I would run into, and I wouldn't intentionally try to be late. I would just wind up being late. But um, coming here, like I realized that like if you're not on time, like you're gonna be punished for it. So like whether you miss formation, you might have to go to the wall, do some push-ups, or like you're late for lunch, uh, formation, written up. So I was like, it just keeps you on your feet. And then uh, I went home for like one of the parents or like it was one of the breaks I went home and I remember I had to go somewhere and I was there like super early, but I was like, you know what? I'd rather be early than be late. So yeah, it's little lessons like that. Yeah, it was different. A lot of people even say, I know you heard it a lot. Like you may not think it, but once you leave here, you know, like, those things just become second nature yeah. and you just start doing it. Yeah, no, for sure. I think um, when I went back home, I started making my bed. I was like, I never used to make my bed. Yeah, like, yeah. Unless I was told to by my mom, like I would never make my bed. But now I just start making it just out of habit. And I think just coming here, I just developed some of those good habits that like just set you up later for life. Yeah, for sure. Like I was at a hotel. I never made my bed at a hotel because you know, they do it for you. And uh, somehow I woke up, found myself waking up at, I think it was 6.30. Yeah. I felt good, felt like I was awake and then made my bed and didn't have to be out the hotel till like nine, I think. So it's just, it just happened. It's just like second nature now. It's just like yeah. a habit. A good, it's like building good habits. A lot of things my coaches talked about in the past and now just building good habits and on and off the court, just so it makes you a better basketball player, better play, a better person, all that. Yeah. Uh, one thing I want to talk about also is the food here. Like I think like coming here, and uh, I came here during the summer, no one was here. And um, I took a tour of the mess hall and it didn't look like much. I thought the food was just gonna be like sloppy caf cafeteria food, like every other school. And I came from a good school too that had like good food, but this actually just surpassed my like expectation of what I thought this food was gonna be. I mean, every day they have like the fresh fruit, the salad bar, they have the hot meals, they have the, the drink machine where you get like your large uh, selection of drinks. I was like, man, this is the life. Like, <laughs> you get three meals too. I know like sometimes I would wake up, I wouldn't even eat breakfast because I was just late to school. Like, yeah. I would just get there, go to school, but now I get breakfast, good lunch and a good dinner too. So really, really been great food wise. Yeah, the food, the food is way better than what I would have thought. I come in here, here in military school, uh, when I seen the barracks, all that, it was just, it just wasn't, 
It was good, but it wasn't great pretty right. much. Right. And then uh, we went to the mess hall and it was just small. I mean, it looked nice, but I was like, every pub, every squad we've been to, it's just like the food's never been good. Yeah. So when I came here, the I think like the first two weeks, we were just like, this is, this is the life. <laughs> wait, this is the life. Wait, what was your favorite? Like, what's your favorite thing you, you ate so far? Uh, it got to be the general sauce chicken. Oh, that. <laughs> chicken. Yeah. Yeah, mine would probably have to be like the Philly cheese stick. I've been getting like third shit. I don't really mess it. Like, it's good, but I don't really like it. Really? It's my favorite. Oh, man. And what else is good? I mess with uh, general sauce. mess with... Uh, Bro, the fried chicken, you weren't here for that. The fried chicken and mac and cheese was real good. What? You weren't, it was uh, like different than the sandwich, yeah. It's different than the sandwich, it was just fried chicken, it was real crispy. It had some flavor to it and some mac and cheese. It was good. That sounded good. <laughs> you already put barbecue sauce on it, yeah. You already know barbecue sauce on your mac what and cheese. What was that? It was a open weekend, it was only like a few oh, people I here. You. I got you, I got you. It was good though. So, like. So before you came here, of course, you had your thoughts about what it had been. Is it the same? Are your thoughts are we right? Nah, like I think what surprised me was like how close I've become with my teammates. Like, and I've been on teams where it's like, you know, like I treat them as like family. They're my brothers. But like here, it's like actually different because you spend pretty much your whole day with them. Like you're around them when you go to sleep, when you wake up, travel, practice. And it's different when you like when you go through the hardships together, like when you go through life with someone that like, you know is gonna have your back, it's just so much better than just going by yourself. And I, I can turn to my left, turn to my right, and I know that my brothers are gonna be like right beside me. So I think that was like an aspect I kinda didn't really grasp until I actually started to um, come here, which has been great. Yeah, for me, I just, when I heard, when I found out I was coming here and then the closer it got, I just kept telling myself, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a big AU tournament. It's gonna to be a big AU. I'm gonna be with my teammates 24 7. We're gonna have fun. We're gonna get in trouble together, all that. We're gonna get through all this together by the end of the day. Like, I know that I can say, like, Donnie Morris have my back. Mm -hmm. I can say that. I can say everyone on my team have my back whenever I needed it. And when I came here, like, it that, proved my thoughts right, knowing that we all here going through the same things, also helping each other out the same things. It's all just a good feeling just to know that this is a good brotherhood. And they've been telling us since we got here, like, you're going to talk to these people the rest of your life. Like, Coach Matt, he still got a, he got a group chat with the people he went to school here with. Yep. So for him to say that and then, like, closer to it again, like, time being up. And like, I was getting closer to the end of the year when our PGs leave and then when we leave, I really do believe that we're going to be talking to each other the rest of our lives. Like, we're going to always have a relationship. I can call Donnie by, yo, Donnie, how you been? Like, check on him, he check on me. We just call, just and vent about college, all that. I just feel like it's, it's really true. Like, yeah. Margaret does build a lot of relationships deeper than just a basketball relationship. So, like, you've been here probably for almost, like, half half the year so far. What have you, what have been, like, your biggest takeaways from? Uh, my biggest takeaways from Hargrave is it won't work unless you actually come to it with an open mind. Because there's been a lot of people, there's been some people on our team just this year, they like, they came here were rebellious, they didn't want to do anything. But the second they actually like, gave it an open mind and actually gave it a chance, everything changed for them. They start to be better on the court, better in the classroom. You start hearing them say different things you wouldn't have heard them say a month ago. And it's just, it really does when they say, you can come to Hargrave with a boy and leave a man. Like, we may joke about it, but that's a real thing. Like you right. come here, one person you're gonna leave completely different, and it's just how it is. Yeah, I would say um, my mom has this saying. She says like, if you can believe it, you can achieve it. And before coming here, it was kind of just like one of those things that we would say. But like, I like I didn't truly like believe it, kind of. And um, like coming here, it kind of made me realize that like anything in life that you want, like you can achieve as long as you believe it, and as long as you think it's possible and in reach. And I think that like coming here, a lot of kids, um, even myself included, were just kind of like optimistic and we're kind of hesitant to not put both feet forward. But I think the second you put both feet forward and you kind of give it your all and you believe that this is going to benefit you, I think it actually will benefit you um, in the long run. And I think that's just like, um, like something that 
can translate to life just in general is like stop putting just one foot in and put two feet in and attack with everything you got because that's going to give you the most um and that's going to give you like the most results i guess for your uh, for your liking so yeah so it might be bad for you because you did graduate last year so since i didn't graduate but i did reclass i yeah. should have graduated but a lot of my friends i call them be like how's college how's basketball been like from aau from school season all that a lot of them playing college basketball I'm like how is that it like it's so hard like, it's just so draining mentally to school all that but then I think back and be like, we are hard game. Yeah. Like we have people, we have to wake up at six o'clock every morning. Yeah. We have to walk outside, cold, all yeah. that. Like I was looking like y'all got it made. So a lot of people say once you go to hard once you go to Hargrave and go to your college, it's not gonna you're gonna be ahead of the freshman. And I, I truly believe that. Yeah. Like I believe that we will be ahead of the freshman there. Just because I'm going through these hardships and then it's just gonna make us better leaders. Yeah. Another aspect I like about Hargrave is that, uh, like, your ability to influence, like, uh, the younger generation. I think, um, you know, sometimes that can be a little bit bad. But um, for some cases, actually, like, I actually like talking to little kids and, like, um, just trying to lead them to the right path, I guess, and kind of help them because I've been through some of the stuff that they've gone through. Obviously, I haven't been sent here as a little kid, but, like, I've been through, like, some of the troubles that they have. And I think just being able to mentor them has been big for them and uh, some of the kids I've gotten really close with. So it's been great. Yeah, for me, um, I remember the very first day of matriculation, I was waiting in line, signing the papers and stuff. There was this kid in front of me. He was smiley, happy, laughing. He was just a happy person. And then he told me his name that first day. I remembered it till this day. And um, he, uh, I seen him one day just sad, said his name. So you good? Like, what's the matter? You need to talk. And uh, we sat down and had like a 15, 20 minute conversation. And, and I'll tell you that like really brightened my whole day. It really yeah. brightened my whole day. Like yeah. for me to be able to help him the way I helped him and be there for him, it just, it spoke volumes about the type of person I have be able to become coming here because last year I would not have done that. All right. If I'm being honest, I would not have to let the kid just walk and be sad. But for me to really talk to him, it just it really meant a lot to me. And until this day, I, I just see him and I'm like, how you doing? You good? And he puts a smile on my face every day, seeing him running around yeah. happy, yeah. just loving it, just loving life. It just makes me happy. It makes yeah. me like love life with him. It's just a good feeling just to be able to be there for the younger cadets and help them through things. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, to be honest, like I didn't know really what to expect. You know, I I had seen their team last year, and um, I had seen a couple guys that I thought were like pretty competitive, and I thought like oh it'd be nice to compete with them. And um, seeing this year's squad, I didn't really know a lot about a lot of you guys, just because I went from Florida, and a lot of you guys were like located elsewhere. But coming here, I think the competition really has brought my game to another level. I think competing with the guys every day in practice has been great. Like, uh, I think I've already grown exponentially as a player, and I think it's only going to keep growing. But I think what makes this so good is that, like, um, the guy that's defending me, elite defender, the guy that's also on health side is also an elite defender. So it forces me to have to be uh, an elite offensive player. And I think that just keeps building and building over time. And I think it's just cultivating like a great like sense of like eliteness. For me, I see like closer I got to the time, I seen a lot of people starting to like say they come to hard grade, committed posts, all that. And for me, I'm not gonna lie, seeing all that, I'm like, oh, I'm not playing on this team. <laughs> I, I was like, I'm not I'm gonna go here and I'm not playing on this team. And then once I got here, I had like like the first two months were just rough for me. Like I was just I wasn't playing the way I know I could play. And me, Donnie, and uh, Med were down in the weight room, and we were just talking. And things to help with, with basketball, all that. And uh, after that talk, I've reached, like, I played on a whole different level. I feel like from that day, moving forward, the way I played on the court, I've never played, like, in my life. And, like, the things they were just telling me, they were just like, Med was just saying, I started meditating. Just 
thinking is being in a quiet space, just me listening to my breathing, just clearing my mind, just chilling. Uh, Donnie telling me just stay positive, always think positive thoughts, telling me like how good I really was. Like my whole life I've been hearing how good I was, but it never came from a teammate. So that just reached a different level. I just a whole bunch of adults saying, you can be this, you can be that, like, you're really good. But I never heard a teammate say that. And for him to say that, it just really like changed my foot, like my mental on the court. It's like, yo, like, I'm looking at Don. I was looking at Don like, yo, he nice. Like, <laughs> I was looking at Don like he was that. And for him to tell me that I was good, I was just like, yo, that's crazy. I, um, I think like a big part of what I've learned coming here is that like, it's so much more than just like the sport. Like it's crazy how powerful your mind is. Like you'll see like those placebo experiments where like they give people the fake pills and stuff and they actually convince them that like, hey, this is gonna help cure you. And then some of them end up being cured and it's like, you, we basically gave you nothing. I think it translates to basketball because it's like, you can so much, you can do so much more if you kind of just set like your, the negative thoughts aside and just keep it positive. Like, your mind is so powerful. And I think a lot of athletes suffer from like self-confidence and like just kind of taking themselves out of their own game. They can put in like endless hours in the gym, on the field, um, in the cages, whatever it may be. But just your mind not being trained and your mind being elsewhere can kind of just deter you from reaching your maximum potential. And I think it, being that hard game has kind of helped me just understand it, like, just to you, you know, like, just do the positive things um, and kind of just play the sport that you love. Because, you know, no one, I think no one here, at least that I know of, came here um, without, like, the love of basketball in their heart. You know, whether it may be they want to set themselves set, uh, set themselves up for the future by going to college or, like, maybe trying to go even past college, go to some sort of pro level. But everyone that came here came here because they loved the sport. So... When you step out there, like, just do what you love, have fun with it. Don't think so much and just kind of play. I know it's easier said than done, but. That's how it starts it. Yeah. Yeah, like, before I came here, you know the saying, like, basketball is 90% mental, 10% yeah. physical. My whole life, I'm like, bro, you got to play that. Like, yeah. you got to be physically good yeah. to play basketball. Yeah. But then when I came to Hargrave, I was like, yo, that's real. Like, you, it is. It's more mental than physical. Mm -hmm. like, it really is. And just being here and learning that is just, you really get to learn new things. And how you said, everyone that came here, I love for basketball. Like the college coaches I've talked to, all that, they've always said, like, I ain't got to worry about you, worry about you not loving it or wondering if you love it because you wouldn't have went to a military school to just for nothing. Like you find it, you find, like if you come here, you got you love this game All right. on a different level, a deeper level than right. you could even think. I still remember talking to my mom. We were doing basketball a whole bunch. And then she's like, How is it? I said, I love basketball even more. I I just I found a whole different love for it once I've been around it a lot more. A lot of people talk about being around it more, it makes them want, want it less. But for me, when being around it more it made me want it even more. And I love this sport more than I've loved it in my life. Yeah. It's just a big love. It's good. I mean, yeah, I mean, just backing off what you said, I mean, the fact that, you know, we are cadets here, just like all the other cadets, like we go through the same hardships. And then on top of that, we uh, play basketball. We're in the gym like four or six hours a day. So I think it kind of helps with recruitment because college coaches see that and they're like, wow, they go through all this stuff during the day. And then they still you know, come out here, give it their all. And I think it's just really good to help you develop as a player, too. Yeah, like, it's not easy being a student athlete at Hargrave. No, it's, yeah. it's not. Sure. I'm not going to tell you, like, it's easy. It's a hard thing to do. But once it's all done and over with, and you can say, I graduated from Hargrave, or I went to Hargrave for what? How long have you been going to be here? Six, seven months? Yes. Like, for you to say that, yeah. it really is like, there's not many things I can't do. So once we get to college, it's going to be, we're going to not have to worry about the military stuff, but we still going to have that embedded in us. All right. Like by the time y'all leave, it's like, y'all going to go back home waking up early. Why am I up early? Yeah. Like, might as well get up out of bed. I'm up now. Yeah, like, yeah. Before it was, why am I up early? Snooze, let me go back to bed. Like, it's just going to be 
a whole different thing. Like me just being here for a month, me waking up, like I'm at a hotel, like I'm supposed to be on like a little vacation. Yeah. Like, I'm away from school and I'm waking up early making my bed and all that. Yeah. And I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> but I just couldn't stop. I just yeah. kept going. It was just yeah. like, it just became like riding a bike. Yeah. It's like riding a bike. You don't forget how to ride a bike. Um, yeah, I think another thing it's taught me is like holding uh, like your uh, teammates and just your friends accountable. Uh, I think it's better when it's said from like a person um, standing next to you rather than like a higher up. And I think it travels further if uh, like your own teammate, your own friend tells you to fix something. Because it's like if he's telling me that, that means I really need to fix because he cares for me the most out of like pretty much everyone here. So I think that's kind of it's taught me to just um, hold my uh, other teammates and friends accountable. And I think it's you have to do it in a way that's not rude or, you know, not aggressive, but just like out of passion is what you kind of have to um, lean towards. And I think it's been great. Yeah. Well, I wish I could make a montage of like all of you guys to say so expressions the first time an underclassman told you what to do. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is big. No, yeah. Like, no, no, 18, 19. No, like, every, yeah. time, like, every time I see you guys, I watch, like, the first day or two. Yeah. Right? And, like, somebody, like, uh, the BC is obviously yard back. Yeah. And somebody would yell at you, and I'll be like. No, yeah. We were, uh, I remember the, the first week, we were like, bro, how old is that kid? And we were talking about uh, Moo. And were, it's, he's it's like, 16. Yeah, we were, and some of the kids were like, said, they were like, I, I was taking orders six, from those 16 year old. <laughs> That's what, yeah, that was a big thing yeah, that, that we that we finally got over now. Yeah. It's like, it don't matter. Like, even when, when we get to our jobs, wherever that may be, exactly. we're going to be older than, uh, we may be older than the person that runs the whole company. Yeah, but yeah, at the end of the day, he going to come, if he comes in there and tells me to do this, 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 I, I can't be like, yo, I'm 15 years old. You can't tell me what to do at the end of the day. Yeah. It's just how life is. And that's one thing I call my mom about. Like, we got little kids telling me what to do. Like, this kid, 16, telling me I got to do this, 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 like, this plan. She was like, that's how life is. Yeah. And once you get used, the quicker you get used to it, the better your life's going to be. There's going to be a lot of people in your life that can be super young. They're going to tell you what to do because yeah. they have that power. And they have, but also that power, like, great power comes with great responsibility. It's a real thing. Yeah. Like, Moody. I don't really see Moody mess up a lot. Yeah. Like, but I know it's hard for him, like, to not mess up here, yeah. knowing how strict it is. Right. And then when he does mess up, he's quick to get on it. He's quick to right his wrongs, uh, take whatever punishment it is, all that. Right. So he really does it a high standard. And, uh, my barber, when I went back in town, he said, like, no matter where you are in life, unless you're like at the top, like a CEO, even if you're C like a CEO, you're still going to have to listen to like the people that you like boss over, essentially. So he was like, even if you're an entrepreneur, it's not you work for yourself. You actually work for all the people that buy your product or you give them material. So it's like, instead of going from having one boss, now you have hundreds of little tiny bosses that are kind of giving you feedback and whatnot. And it's your job to kind of take that and learn. Don't take it and hold it as a grudge and be like, oh, no, I'm not going to listen to what this so-and-so said just because I don't like them. Even if you don't like them, it's good for you because it helps you grow yeah. your company or whatnot, grow your career. So... Yeah. That's been a big thing, just learning from, like, to take it from little kids, I guess. It's, yeah, it's just, like, just thinking about it. The president of America has to listen. Like, he doesn't just, he has things he has to go through. Yeah. He can't just do things on his own. 100%. Last call. Yeah. Like, whatever I say goes, like, that's the president of America. Yeah. Like, Leadership is, is not privilege. It's yeah. Not right. Yeah. 100%. Even he has to listen to people. And it's, it's just, a leader is not. Being a leader is not easy. At the end of the day, it's not an easy task. It's actually harder than you think, knowing that when he messes up, they're gonna go back to they gonna he gonna get in trouble, but they're gonna go back to his leader, like, why he do this? Why that's your fault. Like you didn't tell him he had to put his shoes a certain way or blah blah blah. It always goes back to your leader, whoever is that leader. So being a leader is a lot. It's just it's a it's a good thing. A lot of people think it's a good thing to have, which it is, but it's it gets, that's when things really get hard, knowing that you have to lead over 15, 16, 7, however many people it is. It's just, but it's a fun thing to do. Right. And you got to understand that, like, people that get into those leadership positions, like, they don't get there by will or, like, I mean, by luck or, like, by chance. It's usually earned. And I think, um, like, before I really 
really knew Moo. I mean, I don't know him that well now, but like I know him a little bit better. Anyone that knows Moo kind of knows that like uh, like he wasn't the most privileged. Like he didn't have the best fortune coming in here. And like you go into the weight room, you see all his stats and like he holds the record for pretty much almost every weightlifting thing. And then uh, you see his rank and you're like, wow, like, man, this kid, he just so, works really hard. So, and like, if you didn't know, like, Moo, like, you wouldn't know that, like, you know, he doesn't have the best luck coming from where he came from. So to see him, like, work so hard and pretty much earn where he, like, where he is now, it's giving me a whole lot of respect for him. And it's just crazy because, like, I wouldn't have assumed that um, just by first glance. I, I, my first thought was just like, yo, like, who put this kid in charge? Like, what, yeah. what made him so lucky to be this guy? But, like, seeing it now and seeing, like, kind of more of the stuff that goes on backstage. I can see like this kid definitely earned his his, his role here. Yeah, I couldn't do what Moose doing. He's a soldier. I couldn't do what he's doing. Yeah. Like, I think it's bad being from my family. My family's like, what? Our flight is yeah. an hour yeah. and a half. I don't know how Moose does it. He's, yeah. really, he's really tough. Yeah, he's really yeah. Tough. But like you wouldn't even, because he's such like a kind, like caring person when we talk to him and his attitude is just like, so positive and it's like you would never expect someone like that to come from like such a stroke i guess and they kind of put into perspective like you know how fortunate some of us are like i come like i'm able to fly home my parents are able to afford the flight home and fly me back to school and i'm like just little things like that, that i kind of take for granted really help uh seeing me really helps me put into perspective like how much i'm Grateful for that. Yeah. So, like, your first week here, what was your thoughts? Oh, it's been like the first week was over. Bro, what was your thoughts? That first day of matriculation felt like the longest, like, oh, my God. Like, I first came, like, we, first of all, we had matriculation, like, the first day we got here. It wasn't like we got here, we moved in our stuff, then the next day we had matriculation. It's like, you move in your stuff, you have, like, a three-hour window, you go see, like, all the... Uh, front office people, you get situated. Your parents help you move your stuff to your room. Uh, you put like maybe your pictures down, your clock, um, you know, your blanket, whatnot. Next thing you know, within the next two hours, you got to be downstairs, like getting your MARPAT uniform. Uh, you got to get measured for your other uniforms and stuff like that. You got to wait in the line to get your rifle, um, your company shirt, and everything. And it's just like everything is just moving so fast. And then, um, that first week we had to dress in more I was like, man, this, this is brutal. Like, I don't know how, yeah. I don't know how I'm going to make it through. Like, and this was just wearing more pad. Like, um, now we have to wear, you know, the button up shirt and the pants. And I, and at first they were, kids were, we were in the auditorium the second day. I think they were like, are we going to bring back Marpat Monday? And I was like, Marpat Monday? Like, why would cheer you want Marpat Monday? Like, this is, give us civilian clothes Monday. But then uh, I started to realize, like, Marpat is yeah, pretty that's a uniform. Like, that's a best uniform. And so, um, but man, time moved, like, so slow. Like, the first, first two weeks, like, between uh, like getting adjusted to this new curriculum and then also coming here. Um, with the new team, new coaching staff, like we were in the gym twice a day, which was like hard, rigorous activities too, which was kind of new for me. Um, the days just felt long. And uh, someone said that like, the days are long, but the weeks are short. And that's kind of how it's been like from ever since I've heard that it's like each day may be long, but like you blink and then the next thing you know, it's the next month. I think that's kind of described like how it is like. Yeah, we're already at Thanksgiving. I still remember the very first day and now, we're, what, a week away from Thanksgiving break? It's, yeah. just, <laughs> it's just crazy. It I, is. I remember telling myself for that first I'm like, yo, I can't do it. I need to go home. Like, yeah. There's no way I'll make it through the year, all of that. And then the first week went by, all right, it's, it's okay. Like, I can deal with it. Yeah. First month went by, this ain't bad at all. Yeah. Now we're here, and it's like, I don't mind being here. Like, I would love to be at home, but yeah. at the same time, it's just like, this ain't as bad as what I made it out to be. Was it like everything you grow, grows requires? Yeah. That, that sort of sacrifice. No, it does. Hundred percent. Like you haven't even gone home yet, right? Like yeah, I haven't, I haven't uh, been home yet. Yeah, like, they've all been home. Yeah, they went to go see their families, all that. And I haven't, I haven't left here yet. Yeah. I was talking to my mom the other day. Um, uh, my brother, my mom, and my brother, my brother did something, just being tardy to class and all that. 
And I'm just like, just the way I talk to him, I sounded like a parent. My mom said, you sound like a parent. You sound like, you sound like me, blah, blah, blah. I was like, I just, I don't know, it just came to my mind. That's what came out. Yeah. She was like, Hargrave really like doing good for you. You just got to keep buying in. I'm proud of you. And then just knowing that I got a big support system behind me, knowing that I'm a big family. I come from a really big family. Knowing that they all want to see me. CC. They all want to be there for me. And it really just means a lot knowing that when I fall back, they're there to catch me. Yeah. I'm being real honest. I didn't appreciate that until I, I always appreciate it. I always like, yeah, I got to get support system. But I really didn't realize how big it was and how much support I really had until I came to Hargrave. Like Hargrave really opened my eyes about how good my life was. I had a great, I'm complaining all the time, not all the time, but I was complaining a good amount, like, but really my life was, I had it made. It's crazy because like everything like I have in my life essentially has been because of my parents, like my, because I'm like, because I'm here, it's literally because my parents are able to afford this and like, provide this opportunity for me. I mean, a lot of the research that went into like coming here, my mom was right there with me. My dad has always been by my side. So um, like I contribute a lot of my success in life just to them and how they've kind of raised me and built me up to be who I am today. And it's just crazy to see like, you know, some kids like uh, they don't understand like the privilege that they have of just having like parents that'll come get them and yeah. their ability to go home. You know, like some kids aren't even able to go home because they have to stay here. So it's just like crazy that like to see um, those kids and it just puts into perspective like how blessed and fortunate we are. Yeah, I remember my sophomore year, I started driving and um, this kid, he just moved to Richmond. Um, That's right, he's a Richmond man. Yeah, his kid just moved to Richmond. He was, uh, he was, uh, his parents didn't really do much for him. Never at, never came to a game. I only came to one game, which was senior night. Never, uh, just didn't do much for him. So he was just really doing things on his own, figuring things out himself while taking care of his siblings. Um, so yeah, I would help him, help his siblings. Like my mom makes some extra food, take it to his house. Like it just really meant a lot to showing that I showed flashes of like, Slashes of that, that kindness and all that. But here, it's just like every chance I get, like I'm looking for opportunities to be nice to little kids. Whoever you meet, like in your life, just try to impact their way, mm -hmm. like impact how they, like their life. Um, Cause like no one's gonna remember like, you know, like if you picked up like their pencil or something like that, or like whether or not you scored 20 points against them, but like, how they how they feel about you and your, their emotions towards you, or what's gonna be remembered for them. I remember, I remember one year it was Christmas. Actually, last year, I got everything I asked for, everything I asked for, and it just felt good. Cause then that's and that's like one of the moments where it was just like, you got it made. Like, I really got it made. There's some kids that ask for stuff and don't get not one thing. Yeah. So it just really like. Just crazy that what, just being young, people, my mom tell me like, you have, you're so fortunate for this, this, that, blah, blah, blah. There's kids that can't do this, can't do that. And it never meant anything to them. Like she just chatting right now. But then when that happened, it really meant a lot. And then coming here, it just made it even more like being on my own, just made it even more known. Like it's like in my face, young, like you haven't made, you haven't made. I think we take advantage of like being together. I think like we're always staying late. Like after everyone has already left the mess hall, we always are usually the last one to just talk. I knew you guys. Like I'll be down the hall. And I yeah. Hear somebody say something. I can't hear what you said. I hear everybody just. Yeah. Laugh not laugh right yeah. Now. Yeah. No. It's yeah. great. I'm yeah. That's the laughter, the jokes, everything is just. It's a great feeling. It's like I say one of the best feelings of my life. No, yeah. It, Cause it's. <clears throat> I was talking to a kid. Um, we were actually talking to a kid uh, who was sitting behind uh, our bench and the game was practice. The game was pretty much over. And we were talking to him. We were like, yeah, man, you should come here. Like you seem like you have a lot of potential, like high athletic. He was like, military school. Like, I don't know if I can do that. Like you guys got to wear that uniform and then you guys got to cut your hair. And then we were like, yeah, I mean, it's tough a little bit, but like you get, like you do adjust to it. And then he was like, what time like you guys wake up and stuff like that. We were like, uh, we got to wake up at like 6.15 and then 
Um, our days pretty much packed from 6.15 to 10. He was like, oh yeah, I don't know if I can do that. And like at first glance, like hearing that, it does kind of deter you away from like maybe coming here. And like people think it's so bad, like, oh man, I can never do that. But like really like you do just kind of adjust and like you just get used to like what we have going on and you make do of what you have and your friends. And I, that's really been like big for me is like, Without them by my side, I probably don't know if I would be able to do it, but like because they're there, it's been so much more enjoyable. It's just made the experience so much more better. Yeah. My grandpa is someone who I look up to very highly, but he was in the military and he he just do little things like he wake up at four o'clock, just make his bed and then go to the front room and drink some coffee and watch TV. I'm like, why are you waking up at four o'clock? You don't gotta be at work till seven. I mean, that's just how he's at. I was in the army. We waking up that early. I just had to get up. It's just, that was just what I do. Uh, and it's just like, it's real. I was like, he's just doing that just because he wants. Like, that's not real. He just, but now that I've done it, waking up at six o'clock and then waking up at six, it's just like, I get back home. If I slept till nine, that was early. If I slept till nine then, like right now, oh my God. <laughs> that's why he did your door. He be knocking on the door. He's like, turn on your lights, open up your door. Turn your lights on down the whole hallway. And like, like on the weekend, Saturday, waking up, I wake up at like eight o'clock and back home, I would never do that. That's early for me. But now it's just like, like dang, I slept in a little too late. Like, yeah. it's just yeah. eight o'clock now is sleeping in. Nine o'clock now is sleeping yeah. in. Like, like, it's crazy that you say that because like, I went to bed at like 12 on last, uh, last Saturday, or like Saturday night. And I was like, Man, at least I get to sleep in to like eight or nine. I'm like eight to nine hours of sleep. Like that's good. Like that's that's great. And but back home, I was thinking like eleven a.m. Like twelve. Well, eleven. Yeah. Twelve. That's that's, that's like yeah. here. It's like eight to nine. Like that's 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 good sleep right there. Yeah, so. I, yeah, I told people back home about I was like, like, what time you waking up? I'm like six. Like is that on the weekends? So I was like, no, nah, the weekends we get to sleep in. It was like before, like before we had games, so like, we we get to sleep in. Look at that, nah, they say yeah. that's not sleeping in. Like, <laughs> yes, yeah, that's sleeping in. Yeah, it's and it just feels good to wake up early. No, yeah, so, I, I don't even wake. I wake up at like seven usually. If we, we get to sleep in, I wake up at like seven. I don't even wake like sleep till nine because I'm just like programmed pretty much to just wake up. And I'm like, I wake up rested, like ready to go. Feels good to wake up early. Like, like, us, yeah. I love waking up early. I hate like sleeping in because then it feels like I've wasted so much of my it day. Makes day. It makes the day feel like it's rushed. Yeah, hundred percent. And then I'm so like, much to do. Then it's like, especially now, like the sun goes down at like four forty-five. It feels like so now it's like, oh, Harvey is a good place, man. It's a good place, a hard place too. But the quicker you buy into it, the quicker you put two feet in, the quicker you just accept it and not try to force it away, the quicker you'll become a better man, a better basketball player, you have a basketball, a better, whatever you want to be, you're here, for, you say you're here for, you'll be better at it. And it's just, and you don't even know you're getting better. you like, you'll just say little things here and there. It's just like, can I say that? That's not me, bro. Your parents say this. And it's just, you just get better and you don't even know it. It's just a good place to be, but a hard place to be. But when it's all said and done, you're going to be a better man. Yeah, I would say um, setting expectations kind of sets you up for failure because you, uh, you know, you shoot for this and then you may come short and you're kind of like, dang, like, what did I do wrong? But coming here has kind of told me to, like, set a standard, not an expectation. Keep that standard the standard pretty much. So standard is the standard, standard is the standard.